Welcome to Agile to Agility Podcast with Milan Bayic. Major show alert. The very first value we wrote is individuals and interactions. Let's take this to another level. Everything that I see coming out in not not just since 2018, but also uh, 2016, 2017, 2018, and beyond. Mm. Every new thing that I see coming out, I think Enterprise Scrum has impacted in one way or another. Especially mm. all of the focus over the last four years around business agility. What was your first encounter with? Mike Beadle. Uh, meeting meeting Mike was kind of funny. Um, there's a little bit of backstory here. I um, I've been practicing Scrum for I don't know five or six years before, and really liked it. And you know, really liked becoming a Scrum master, becoming better at it. I was horrible at first, and uh, getting lots of lots of different people's points of view on how to be a great Scrum master. And then you know, starting to become familiar with um, you know, big people's names like, you know, Ken Schwaber, Jeff Sutherland, and, and then of course, Mike Beadle. And then I figured out Mike lives here in Chicago. You know, I'm a Chicago native. I'm like, what if, you know, I had already taken my CSM class and I was like, what if I just dropped in on him and said, hi, I just want to shake his hand, meet him. And if things go, if things go any further, that's cool. And if they don't, that's cool too, but I just want to meet the guy. So um, I send them a couple of emails. They all go unanswered. And uh, what are we talking about? We're talking about uh, 2013, 2014, something like that. Um, everything goes unanswered. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm working like three blocks from where he's teaching. So on my lunch hour, I just, I drive over to the hotel where he's teaching a CSM class. I drop in and I go, you know, during the lunch break, I'm like, I'm like, hi, Mike, you don't know me. My name is Rick, a big fan. I bring the black book, you know, and, and I have him sign it and everything. And, and I'm like, hey, if there's ever any, uh, any time where, you, you know, you'd be okay with me sitting in on a class, I would love to just sit in the back and observe. I just, I, I myself want to become a trainer eventually, but you know, it would be great to learn from somebody like you. He goes, yes, come to Monday's class. This is, this is like Friday, <laughs> right? He's like, come to Monday's class, be there at 9 a.m. I'm like, oh, okay, we could do that. And so I came to Monday's class and about halfway through the first day of class, he says, okay, Rick, uh, why don't you, uh, why don't you walk them through, through this exercise? I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go uh, I'm going to go do something. I forgot what he said he was going to do. So he leaves yeah. the room for like an hour and a half. He's gone wow. for like an hour and a <laughs> half. And we're doing like the uh, candy factory game. You know, that people have to pass candy between them. Mm -hmm. And like, I don't know if I'm doing this right. I've only seen it done like three times. Um, Mike and I never talked about this at all. He, why would he trust me? Someone he just met for like five minutes, a couple of days ago. And I've been sitting quietly in the back of the room all day. Wow. Why would he trust me to do this? You know, and nobody in the room knew why I was there. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't participating in activities or anything. I was just observing. So that was just yeah. so weird. <laughs> and it was surprise things like that, that uh, made me really love Mike because he would just do stuff and it, and mm -hmm. it just all sort of always magically worked out. Um, it's because of experiences like that, that, uh, you know, Mike, Mike and I kind of bonded really well uh, over the coming years. You know, I sat in on more of his classes. I co-trained with him a, a few times. And, um, uh, you know, several years later, I ended up co-training with him a lot so that I could become a trainer myself. But I, I think it just because of that very first meeting with him and that very mm -hmm. first experience with him in class, um, that's that's part of why I, why I do what I do. And that's, uh, you know, it's, it's a big reason why I'm a huge proponent of Scrum now, because, you know, things could have gone very differently way back in the early days, you know, 
I could have, you know, I could have fallen back into traditional project management type ways. Mm -hmm. I could have, um, you know, I could have gone solely Kanban or so, or a different way, you know, uh, I think it was because of Mike's influence and, and him always looking towards the future. There was always something big brewing on, on the horizon and it ended up eventually becoming enterprise scrum. Right. Yeah. Um, there's always something big that he was talking about. I want to do this. I want to do this. And I'm like, Mike, you're going in so many different directions. Is all of this one thing or is this just a lot of different side projects? And eventually it ended up being enterprise scrum, which is, you know, one big thing. So anyway, so I, I kinda, maybe, yeah, no, that, that's great. And that's really like, I mean, it speaks, I love that story because it, it, it says, uh, it, although that, uh, you know, this is about Mike, but also, you know, told me a lot about you, uh, you know, you going, you know, the extra mile of like, he's not answering, trying to figure out how do I meet this guy? Uh, it's really cool, and uh, I, I think uh, uh, that's something I didn't expect, but I really appreciate you sharing uh, that as well. Um, in what other ways has Mike impacted you? Like, what did you learn from him? What are some of the biggest things through co-trainings, through talking to him? Uh, when you reflect back, what are some of the things that, you know? Yeah, uh, I, I'd, say, I, I'd say between... Um, between 2016 and 2018, um, it, it was actually the, the, um, the public, let's say it that way, the public development of Enterprise Scrum that really kind of uh, drew me to Mike because, you know, uh, less was becoming a bigger and bigger thing. Uh, less had always, always been around, but it was becoming bigger and bigger. Um, there was talks of Sutherland coming out with something, you know, some scaling mm -hmm. framework. Uh, Nexus had been out for a while. And of course, uh, Scaled Agile uh, was always lurking in the shadows, you know, uh, becoming bigger. Um, Mike, including everybody that was around him that he thought could actually make his idea better, was something that was truly refreshing to me. Mm -hmm. And it, it got me to start to really understand what collaboration was, you know, yeah, of course, all throughout our agile careers, we talk about uh, collaboration, cohesive teams, sharing of ideas, brainstorming, everybody's uh, vision counts. But mm -hmm. this was like the first true application of it that I'd seen. Mike was willing to take this thing that he had developed from the ground up and open it up to his most trusted friends and say, what do you think of this? Is the wording right here? What do you think of this concept? How can we develop this concept better? And in it, while doing that, while almost literally wrapping his arms around the entire trusted community, he also wrapped his arms around and, and, and uh, sort of embraced all of agility at the same time. I, I think the biggest problem with enterprise scrum and in, in gaining acceptance was it had the word scrum in it. You know, it, it should have been yeah. like enterprise agility, or I, I don't yeah. even know what the right name would be, but it was all of agility and including mm -hmm. everything outside of agility. It was, Hey, let's understand this world of work because we talk about the world of world of work a lot. And most people have sort of, you know, blinders on, and they only want to look at one aspect of it. He was saying, let's embrace all of it. And when we want to move an organization towards one direction, we have to turn the entire organization. And how do we do that? Mm -hmm. Do we do it in little tiny turns? Do we do it in one big, gentle, uh, gentle giant type turn? And asking, asking all 30 or 40 of us that were involved in helping him develop Enterprise Scrum to help him develop enterprise scrum mm -hmm. that left a lasting impact on me because now whenever i want to do uh something big i very rarely start off alone mm -hmm. i'll almost always get at least one or two friends of mine who i think have the same general um uh, sort of uh, uh i don't know creative nature and mm -hmm. say hey here's here's my next idea you guys want in on this? You guys want to help me with this? And we'll start together instead of me going off and, and sort of, you know, burning the midnight oil every single night, trying to get something off the ground. 
and then saying, hey, what do you guys think about this? Do you want to do it with me after I've done 90% of the work? Yeah. You know, I mean, there's something magical about that co-creation, like you said, especially if you align yourself with people that, you know, you have trust and are willing to, there's not a lot of group think where you're willing to uh, discuss it. There's not the main knowledge, but you're also pushing each other to probably, you know, think in different ways. So, um, so maybe to, you know, stay on enterprise scrum, um, do you know, first of all, you talk about, you know, it should be called something else um uh how like were there any discussion was that the ship already sailed on what is it going to be called or did you guys have discussions on on the name for the framework or i i can't even begin to count how many times i talked to him about changing the name um yeah. i i, I, I i think at one point you know we we're meeting just about every other day for several months I think for about a one month span, every single time I talked to him, I said, okay, so what, what have you thought about, you, you know, what's your idea around changing the name to something else? And he was getting really tired of that. Um, I think, you know, uh, you know how we come up with a great idea for a name for something and then we, we sort of go all in on it. You, you know, we, yeah, yeah. we buy the domain, we trademark the name or, or, or whatever. We, we build a lot of, foundation around this phrase this term whatever you want to call it and then we realize wait it's taken on a new life it needs to be called something else oh it's that sunk cost i spent so much time and energy in that one thing and now it's going over here yeah. how do i change that and i and i think that's where mike was going with that is there's so much invested you know time money energy all in in one thing if we call it something else what do i lose yeah i mean he had an entire company named Inter enterprise scrum so this well, thing that's that he the created, thing, yeah you know yeah. yeah and i can relate to that i mean as you were talking about so like i i, I have a book that i've been writing that's based on wicked problems and leading in wicked and complex environment and the title of the book is wicked leadership but you know, as I've been, like you said, as the book evolves and things like that, and as I kind of get uh, input from people, like probably Wicked Leadership is not necessarily the best title <laughs> for the mainstream, right? They're probably for people that are familiar with Wicked Problems, it might be, but I, I, I have that same type of feeling that some cost, like I've invested, I have the domain, I paid for the domain, uh, all of that crap that at the end of the day, like, you know, doesn't really matter in a sense, like, you know, uh, or maybe it does, but I definitely relate to that. Um, Actually, you know, you know, not to go off on a tangent, uh, I am likely to do that anyway, but, you know, wicked leadership, I like that because it can go in so many different directions. If you're, if you're in the Northeast, that could be mean great leadership, <laughs> or yeah. if you're anywhere else, it could be, oh, that's horrible leadership, you know? <laughs> so. Exactly. Or, you know, yeah, so that's, yeah, but it's, it's just like, I'm same things are going through my head, which is like, sometimes I'm having doubts about, you know, is that, you know, that's the latest. I've probably gone through five, six different working titles, um, but I can relate to that. Um, when it comes to enterprise scrum, I mean, like, what is uh, what attracted you uh, to to enterprise scrum, and what Mike was doing with enterprise scrum um, compared to compared to other, you know, less and other scaling frameworks that were out at that time. Yeah. So I at the time I didn't have much exposure at all to less or Nexus, like almost none. I, I had heard I had heard that uh, Schwaber was coming up with his own thing. That's, that's, a, that's the extent of my knowledge of Nexus. And I had read a little bit of less. Uh, the third book hadn't come out yet. So, mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I'd read a little bit about it. I wasn't, uh, you know, I wasn't too turned on, but I wasn't turned off. The thing, uh, the thing that clicked with Enterprise Scrum was, number one, I had its creator pretty much in front of me talking to me about it all the time. Um, that's going to influence you one way or another, right? Exactly. Uh, the other big influence was I was working at Nokia at the time, and um, that's when Leffingwell had come to Nokia and said, hey, I've got this idea on how to take lots of connected groups 
and uh, scale their agility in one way. I don't, he definitely did not use those words. Mm -hmm. um, and over the course of time, he, uh, you know, at least at Nokia, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say what happened at other companies, but at least at Nokia, he pretty much destroyed the culture there. It was a huge agile culture there, and he pretty much just destroyed it. And that really turned me off to anything with Dean Leffingwell's name on it. So I'm left with Mike Beadle with Enterprise Scrum <laughs> right here. I, I, you know, we're working, you know, miles apart, not, not, not tens or hundreds or thousands of miles apart. We're working literally a couple of miles apart. I can meet him for lunch pretty much every day, and we did frequently. And he's talking about Enterprise Scrum the whole time. So uh, the beauty that I found uh, with Enterprise Scrum was that it actually didn't, it didn't matter if one area of the organization was using Scrum and another area or even the same area in different teams was using something like Kanban or was, mm -hmm. you know, Waterfall or Spiral or, uh, you know, V-Model or it, any, it didn't really matter. It's it, the beauty of Enterprise Scrum was that you know, if you wanted an organization to go in one direction with how it manages work, you know, Enterprise Scrum accommodated that change. And I, I still think the beauty of Enterprise Scrum today is the idea of constant change, understanding that there is constant change. And how do we deal with it as a company? Not how do we deal with it as a Scrum team? How do we deal with it as a company? So that, and that, that's really what drew, drew me to ES. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, and uh, uh, is there, is, is there uh, a company or, you know, when we look at enterprise from today and Mike's legacy, uh, what's left of it? Well, enterprise scrum as an idea, as a concept is still out there. Um, it's very, cloudy there's a lot of um there's a lot of mystery around what's uh what's the legal ownership of it mm -hmm. um you know do his do his children own it does his ex-wife own it um does his company that doesn't exist anymore does that own it? i it, it's mm -hmm. really it's really it's really suspect where the legal ownership of enterprise scrum is right now what I think the lasting legacy is uh, that everything that I see coming out in not, not just since 2018, but also uh, 2016, 2017, 2018 and beyond, mm -hmm. every new thing that I see coming out, I think Enterprise Scrum has impacted in one way or another, especially mm -hmm. all of the focus over the last four years around business agility. I think Mike had a huge impact on this new trend towards focusing on business agility, mainly mm -hmm. because he worked with the Business Agility Institute before, you know, you know, before it became a thing. You know, he was working mm -hmm. with them in trying to get them to adopt Enterprise Scrum. And once he passed, obviously that sort of fell away, and, but they still got, uh, got his ideas ahead of time and they're still using them today. So I think that's his lasting legacy with Enterprise Scrum is the business agility part and that yeah. business agility institute is still using it. Yeah, and maybe perhaps the foresight that he had that that's what's coming and that, you know, like you said, everything, you know, probably was boiling up to that point, but too, but now everything's focused on that. Yeah. Um, any other stories, uh, anything that you would like to share uh, about Mike or anything that maybe we missed? Or... Um, I, I, I don't know if we missed it, but there is, there is one thing that I wanted to share. And that is just a few months before he passed, um, he, he'd been traveling a lot, you know, trying to get Enterprise Scrum off the ground, trying to solidify a relationship with the Business Agility Institute. Um, he was in Chicago and another CST was in Chicago. I, I hadn't become a CST yet. Uh, I didn't get uh, my CST until after he passed. Um, but also a really big friend of mine in, uh, in the training industry in the South of the United States. Um, she was in town. And I just said, hey, Mike, you know, we're supposed to have dinner tonight. Do you mind if um, Mike Studeman 
joins us. And Mike Studeman, as you might know, he's he's a CSD up in Minneapolis, right? I'm like, do you mind? Uh, he's he's a friend of mine. I don't know if you've ever met him before, but he's in town training today. Do you mind if he joins us? Mike said, sure, yeah, bring him along. And I said, uh, like a couple hours later, I said, and you know what? Another friend of mine is in town and she would <laughs> love to meet you. And he goes, yeah, bring her along. And we just, we had a big old dinner together. And, uh, um, you know, uh, you know, it's just, I don't, here, here's the thing. I don't remember ever having, uh, and I had a lot of meals with Mike. I don't remember ever having a serious meal with him. It was always you know, a lot of joking, a lot of smiling, uh, obviously a lot of drinking, but, um, yeah. <laughs> but just a lot of fun in, it was me and him and a couple of other people who had never met before, just all having a great time. And I, and I attribute that all to Mike's personality. He was just, you know what? He was just an all around great guy. 